Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today we have yet another exciting Streets of Tarkov tidbit of information to share with you. This one is the extended gameplay trailer that just dropped on the Twitch gaming showcase, the, the showcase that Tarkov had just before the E3 Microsoft event. I don't know what, where you would actually lump this into and what exactly they were a part of, but basically Nikita himself came out to talk about Streets of Tarkov to show off this new trailer and just answer a bunch of questions, some from the showcase and from the chat that was there live asking questions. So a lot of stuff went down, a lot of information got shared. And first and foremost, we have this beautiful new gameplay trailer that you are seeing right here now on the screen basically it's kind of like an extension of the trailer number three that we just got no more than what one two three days ago um we've been getting a lot of tarkov news in very a very short amount of time there's also the twitter clip they just shared the other day about the new scab boss on factory he was there sledgehammering people it was amazing i freaked out it's absolutely amazing all the info that we're getting here lately from escape from tarkov it's really exciting stuff so yeah like i said here is the new extended gameplay trailer you're seeing right here on the screen basically we got to get away from the cinematic side of things and really just showcase you know the true walking around firing your gun being in an actual firefight and just getting to see more of what the game really looks like you know of course there's a little bit of a script in there like obviously you know in real Tarkov like a lot of these fights you're seeing on the screen wouldn't exactly go down the exact same way although it would be so so cool if it did a lot of fights in Tarkov are over just kind of instantly like you know they don't last very long they're not very tactical but you know so there's a little bit of script in there you know the game if you play the game you know it's not exactly like this but still close enough we get to see a lot of you know just straight gameplay from streets and it's it's just really exciting to finally get to see that streets has been in development for a very long time we just had trailer number three a few days ago this is technically like what let's say trailer four at the very least i don't know how many trailers we're gonna get before this map actually comes out but we have to be nearing some sort of release date or at least that's what i was hoping until they did the q a after this trailer but we'll get to that here shortly i condensed down the q a i have it all written down all the questions and all of nikita's answers directly from nikita's mouth so at the end of this trailer here i will go through the q a briefly and summarize it for you and we can talk about all that stuff there but yeah just an absolutely you know beautiful gameplay trailer and so i will go ahead and talk about some of the things that kind of got revealed um in the q a about this trailer specifically first thing i want to mention is that i feel like what we're seeing in terms of lighting is looking pretty dang good so far which i think most of the time Tarkov does a pretty good job of lighting except for maybe in the case of like interchange interchange is like you know a hot topic some people are really cool with the lighting some people like that style and some people are really really not happy about it I'm in the category of it could be better I think that the lighting on interchange even though it just got reworked recently isn't the best I think it's a little too dark but hey that's that's just me but the lighting on streets of Tarkov so far I think is looking good the inside it's not too dark you were able to see well we got to see that little clip there of the parking garage is what it looks like the parking garage lighting it seemed pretty good I didn't feel like there was a lot of dark corners that's the way I like it I like obviously the contrast with lighting but I think you know they got it right here in the streets also I want to talk about the destructible environment here basically we did get some answers in the Q&A as for like how that's gonna go and first things first we've seen a lot of like little books flying around when you shoot them computer monitors paintings on the wall just a lot of like little knickknacks around getting blown around with grenades and, and bullets and everything so he did say that that was not going to be networking and was going to be just visual and you know a lot of times things kind of get lost in translation here he's not a native English speaker he does speak you know native Russian and things can get lost in translation but what I believe he means is that it's not going to be featured on the network like if you shoot a book across the room your buddy's not going to see that book fly it's just client side so like all the flying debris and stuff is just on your end and it won't be the same across everybody's end and I think that's just to reduce you know bandwidth and and help free up some space so things aren't so laggy or stuttery so that'll be cool as far as the breachable walls he did confirm that it's not every wall but there are some you know key locations where you'll be able to do that you can use explosives like the gl we obviously saw blew up the wall hopefully we're gonna see grenades do the same thing so nobody has to bring gls every round to breach these walls that would be kind of crazy but he did confirm it's not going to be everywhere just a few key locations because that would just you know use up too much bandwidth and be too much stress on the server okay now 
I want to go ahead and get into the second portion of this showcase, the Tarkov showcase, where Nikita came out and actually, you know, answered questions about, you know, just various topics. So like I said, I've condensed all the questions and answers from Nikita down. I've written them down so we can fly through them pretty quickly here. And so I'll just go ahead and begin. The first question was a nice one and it kind of made me chuckle. Actually, it made me laugh out loud completely. So the question was, are you ready for everyone to get into streets? And Nikita's answer was not yet. Unfortunately, we still have a ton of work to complete. And when I heard that, I just started laughing out loud because it just it's so Nikita to come onto a showcase like this. We're expecting a big reveal and obviously we got it. But then he says, of course, like soon, soon, like it's not ready yet, which is what we've been hearing about streets for a really long time. So, you know, unfortunately, we still have some time to go. But you know what? I had a thought and I'll share it here with you. A lot of games have come out recently and not been exactly ready. Let's talk about one that people think is a good example of this cyberpunk a lot of people think cyberpunk needed to be delayed longer to come out swinging right and obviously this game had been delayed several times which you know kind of angered people but you have to fight delaying your game more and more and more versus releasing it preemptively and what that will do for your reputation right so i think what tarkov is doing here is they're just waiting i mean they're just waiting until they're ready which i think is the better move dropping this massive streets of tarkov map prematurely is just going to not be good for the game right so they're choosing to just keep waiting and waiting and waiting which obviously no one likes but it's better than the alternative where we get streets but it's not ready and we're disappointed so just you know think of the bright side i think this is even though we've been waiting forever streets will be worth it and they're doing it the right way next question was what sort of scale is streets of tarkov on answer from nikita bigger than anything we've seen before no other maps even really compare and this is you know essentially why it's taking so long we've heard it time and time again they've always made a point to tell us how much bigger and better this map is going to be than anything they've done before. So, you know, just reinforcing that idea that the reason this is taking so dang long is because this really is going to blow everyone away. The next question was, how many players are going to be on the map? Nikita said he wants to do 40 PMC still. That is the plan, not including the scavs, the AI scavs, and the special NPC. Now, obviously, this led to the next question, which was special NPCs. What are you talking about? Answer, can't say everything right now. Bosses, of course, maybe others. Thinking about previous podcasts and thinking long term, they have mentioned before they do want to eventually put the traders on the map and Streets of Tarkov could be the best place to actually put them. Now, I don't think we're going to see this anytime soon. Like I'm, this is really long term if you ask me, but basically I think special NPC like the traders could also fall under that category, but we could also see like the Black Division group, which is the rumored, you know, new like badass company of mercenaries that could be coming into the game. We apparently saw them at the end of the raid series, that little movie for Tarkov. No, lots of speculation right now, but Nikita also said bosses, of course, as far as special NPC, and that led into the next question, which was how many scab bosses can we expect to see on streets of Tarkov? Answer, minimum two, most likely three. What they want to do is actually eventually have roaming bosses from other locations. So we could see Killa on streets of Tarkov make an appearance, Rishala, uh, Gluhar, German, everybody from the other maps, all the scab bosses could be seen on streets, which is just going to honestly blow my mind. That is a unique feature that I'm very excited for and I hope they implement well. All right. And the next question was, what is the secret to making Tarkov so scary? Answer, simple, to replicate real life. Real life is scary. Battlestate wanted to do their best to make a game that, you know, posed the question, oh my God, what if this happened in real life? Like, what if my local shopping mall got turned into, you know, what interchange is right now? So Nikita basically said, we just try and go to make it as realistic as possible to make it something that, you know, you can kind of connect to and something that could you could see happening. You know, God forbid this actually happens, but something that seems real, like it could really happen. All right. Next question. What about the tank at the end of the trailer? They teased it again. We got to see the same, you know, tank roll up with the whoever that was on it and the guards and all those NPCs rolling up on the tank or the BTR, the APC, the CPC, the AA. ARP, whatever you want to call that thing at the end. I'm just going to call it a tank. What's up with that thing? And the answer here just made me audibly gasp. Plan is to make it somewhat sort of like a taxi. You're going to pay money to use it and you could have it carry your team around, carry your squad around. You'll also be able to use the mounted gun on it and semi auto. Basically, you're going to pay the driver. He'll drive you around. The path of the tank will be unpredictable and they are going to add the RPG seven and different types of ammo to help combat the vehicle. 
to actually like attack it and immobilize it, blow it up. So when I heard that, I my jaw basically dropped because in my head, when we heard about this tank a few days ago, I had this feeling this is just going to be an entrance for the scab boss. It's not going to play any bigger role. You know, it's going to be cool, but it's not going to be anything greater than like bringing in the scab boss. You know, we probably won't even get to go close to it. It'll be like an out of bounds kind of thing. But no, apparently it's going to play a really huge role. And honestly, it's going to be just again, unlike anything we've ever seen before on Tarkov, just once again, they're raising the bar and, you know, blowing people away like they always do. Next question. When is co-op offline coming to the game? Nikita said, it's a matter of time. We never said that we wouldn't do it. It's just going to be something that we do closer to release or most likely on release. So it's going to be a little while for that co-op offline PVE experience, you know, where you get to go in with your friends and just have, you know, quote unquote fun, no loss, you know, just go offline and do that kind of thing. It's going to be closer to release. So really don't hold your breath. It's, you know, probably going to be a while because if you ask me when is Tarkov going to release, I, I don't think it's going to be anytime soon. And I, like I said, I don't think you should hold your breath for that. They still have a lot that they have planned. Next question. How do you plan something like Streets of Tarkov? How do you start? Where do you begin with that? Answer was, we did a ton of work for referencing. They traveled to Moscow, the Battle State team, and they tried to combine what Moscow and St. Petersburg is, the actual Russian cities, to make like an alternate capital of Russia. So that's basically what Streets of Tarkov is modeled after, you know, Moscow, St. Petersburg, and they just try and make it like a capital city, you know, a really nice place, a lot of stuff going on. Next question, how do you balance this map? Answer, it's hard. We had to cut a lot of things out and work on the most valuable points of interest. As always, they're working hard to see what needs changing, what needs balancing, but you know, they have to make a lot of harsh decisions, a lot of cut, cut and dry decisions where you either keep this or just get rid of it because it's going to take too much time. Basically, they're working on it as we knew already. Then they asked, how do you guys get the sounds for your game? The answer from Nikita, really any way we can. Recording around firing ranges. We needed a place to shoot back in the day when we were first starting out while still keeping things legal. So they even traveled to an abandoned warehouse where they could take their guns and fire blanks inside to get that realistic sound for the guns in the game. And pretty much while they were doing that, they would do a shoot or two, get a couple of takes, and then pretty much stop to listen to see if any sirens from police were coming around. So they just did it guerrilla style as the as the interviewer pointed out and i just think that's really cool because obviously tarkov has some of the best gun sounds in any game i think and most people think and it's just really cool you know to hear about how they did it the next question was how do the destructible walls work and as i said earlier in the video there's not going to be many walls that you can blow up the books and the pictures that fly around will be you know network side uh, will not be network side just a visual effect so client side only and they also want to have wooden doors that you can blow up as well so not just like holes in a wall that you can go through but also wooden doors that can be blown up too which i think it's a small thing but it's going to be really cool to be able to do that next question the karma system what's going on with that and the answer they want to do a small implementation of it in 12.11 which is the upcoming patch we don't know when exactly that's coming out i hope for this next week but probably within the month for sure scav karma is going to have you do things to unlock certain assortments of gear and different um just perks really how are you going to get karma you're going to have to do you know take scav extracts with the PMC, you're going to have to do maybe some tasking as well. And the benefits to getting sc good scav karma are going to be some things like scav guards may even help you out in the raid, maybe even the scav bosses. So you're going to really hopefully desire to earn good scav karma, which is what I want, because, you know, if they do this wrong, I think it could be something people don't really care about. I want this to be a thing that makes the hardcore players scav often because they want to get good karma because it unlocks something worth your time. I'm always looking for something in the game that is, you know, very rewarding and, you know, worth your time. And the final question that we got in the interview was, when is wipe? A classic. Answer, Nikita basically sighed and shook his head and didn't give an answer. This kind of goes hand in hand with what we already thought. A few interviews back, he got asked the same question and basically said, like, it's not even planned right now. It's not planned within the weeks or months. Now, there's one of two possibilities here. Either we're getting the big debate and wipe is coming literally like this month and they're just trying to drop a super surprise bombshell or this is actually you know he's being very truthful and they have so much work to do with streets and i'm assuming they don't want to drop streets until they're ready to wipe i have the feeling that's what's going to happen they have so much work to do that they literally are just not even planning it for the upcoming months so think like we're in uh june 13th right now we got july august think like september october november even like i know this sounds insane this is just my speculation as well like we'll really never know until it happens 
things, but I think we have a while and that the factory expansion that's coming within the month with the new scab boss and stuff is going to hold us over for a while, but then they're going to drop maybe one of the biggest wipes they've ever had. That's my speculation. The new wipe is going to come with streets. Again, speculation. Please don't take my, you know, words as gospel, but I think this next wipe is going to be one of the biggest in the game's history, and it's going to drive a lot of sales for the game and a lot of hype for the game. Anyway, that's the whole trailer, the whole interview and everything I have to share with you guys today. I hope you enjoyed my rambling. Do me a huge favor and like or dislike this video and subscribe to the channel too. We put out so much Escape from Tarkov content, either news or tutorials or just gameplay, all of that. And if you guys want to come talk to me live and ask me any questions you have, please do feel free to stop by at twitch.tv slash finestxi. We stream there full time and I'd love to meet you guys. Until next time, I hope y'all have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.